Welcome to another exciting episode of Fallout Fans. On today's episode, we review the final episode of the season, episode 8. Thank you for joining us as we travel through the wasteland. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another exciting episode of Fallout Fans, a limited series podcast where we discuss all things Fallout, including the live action Fallout TV series. Today on the show, we break down the final episode of season one, episode eight, the beginning. I'm super excited. Remember, as you listen, to leave your review in the comment section below. Remember, this is spoilers now. Watch the show yourself, come back here, and then discuss with us as we break down and review each episode. The audio version of the show is available wherever you get your podcasts by searching for Mega Dads Live. We use a special methodology to help us break down and review episodes. Buckle up. Here we go. Thank you so much for being here. If you joined us just for this episode or straight from the beginning, thank you for listening. I'm joined by none other than the vault boy himself. My best bud, Clay Howard. How you doing, Clay? Doing good, doing good. How you doing? You couldn't resist watching the show super quick. I took my time with it. I apologize. I've been a little bit behind you. This is why we're recording so late, but I'm very glad that I wrapped it up. I can't believe that season two, I have to wait on it because I just needed it the second that the credits rolled, the second that I knew it was over. I wanted more. I can't believe it. Let's get right into it. Starting with strength. We're talking about the best standout strength episode or a moment um, in episode eight, the beginning. I'll go first on this one. I think it's going to be unanimous. The big reveal of this episode is just Coop listening in on his wife on this big undercover meeting and we have you know representatives from Robco, Voltec, etc and they are just talking about the end of the world and he realizes he's like set them straight babe these guys are crazy and then boom he just they they just go into that blank stare he can't believe it she's talking about literally literally ending the world dropping bombs so they could take a a, a business advantage to it so they could shape the future for me, that was the best moment. It was a good payoff. You kind of knew it was coming in a lot of ways that she was just going to be kind of one of them. They were just hinting at it the whole time. But the way that she just delivered everything so cold, I was like, I could see like he felt like truly betrayed. Um, so that's my strength. What did you think, Clay? Yeah, I mean, that was the scene I picked too. Uh, I think they kind of drop a lot of, I won't say bombs, but they drop a lot of really <laughs> intense moments right there in that moment. Because it starts with, with her mentioning that they're going to drop the bomb. And then very shortly after that, she says, war never changes. They, they drop that that big line that we're all you know familiar with. And I think right about that point also is when they show, kind of in that same scene, um, Lucy's dad walk in, young Hank. And so it's kind of this, they did a great job of kind of lining everything up so that when, when they finally showed their hand, it all, it kind of all worked out in all the different things. There was multiple things at play. And so not only do we find out that vault Tech dropped the bomb, but then we also found out that Lucy's dad was alive, you know, pre bombs, pre all that. And so it was just like a lot of things happening all at once. And and so they, they did a really good job kind of cultivating that moment to where it was this pinnacle moment where everything kind of went, whoa, at the same time. So it was pretty great. No, I, I agree. It I feel like I want to see more of, 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 of this. Like, I really hope that we don't leave the past behind because with all the other revelations, what we basically get is that these people have found out a way to live a long time, which is super interesting. And that makes me hopeful that we're going to see more of these characters from the other time, you know, maybe in modern. Oh, yeah. I don't know. Like he ends up hinting that 
his wife could be alive, is, right. which which I wasn't expecting in the very least. I mean, we know that Moldaver was going to be alive. I wasn't expecting the dad to be, you know, a, a vault tech employee. Like, I, I wasn't expecting any of that. So, very interesting. Moving on to perception, visuals or standout audio from the show. Um... I got one in the top of my head that I don't think is going to be the same as you. So I'll let you go first, Clay. What what stood out visual wise or any audio in this episode? Yeah, so I actually had a lot of these. Like I, yeah. I wrote down one, <laughs> then I wrote down another, and I do they just kept coming. Like yeah. there's some really really good moments. Uh, one that was interesting was Young Hank. Mm -hmm. They they kind of youngified him, youngified, which is I love it. Youngified. That's something that you know Hollywood's been doing more recently, and it's it's tough to do. It's a difficult effect to pull off without it looking fake or all that stuff. And so, um, I don't. I wouldn't say this one was like perfect, but it wasn't terrible, especially for television. Gr uh, granted, they have a huge budget, but uh, I mean, we've seen Star Wars kind of drop the ball on this one pretty big, and so <laughs> it's hard to do. But so that one I thought was interesting when I rewatched it today. It was a little, it was a little off. Like there would be moments where like the head would move, but the face wasn't really moving properly with yeah. it. And it's kind of felt like his face was just kind of floating on this head. So it was a little, but like when I first watched it, you know, I didn't even notice. I was just like, whoa, that's crazy. A tank. Like, so I wrote that down. Um, one of my favorite shots was uh, when the helicopters, I forget what kind of helicopters they are called. Bird but birds, I think. The vertebrates, they're flying toward uh, yeah. the final that battle so cool. and they get some missiles shot at them at one point and they like dodge the missile and this dude falls out of the vertebrate into another one and the blades just spin him up real fast. That was, that was a dope shot. I was like, okay, they didn't have to do that, but they did it. And so it was pretty sick. Um, the, the slow motion battle shots yeah. that the brotherhood has when they're, when they're invading and it's over this Nat King Cole song, and <laughs> it's all in slow motion. And like the power armor guys are just smashing people and sh there's like slow motion shots. It's just, it's so sick with, the, with this really peaceful, like lovely old music. It's, it's, it's dope. And then the final thing that I, I really loved was, uh, when the ghoul gets into a firefight at the, at, toward the end against the guys with the power armor he pulls the the fusion core and so they're in the dark and he's just shooting them up and all you can see is kind of the muzzle flashes as he's taking them out and that was pretty sick too so yeah. those are what i had written down i uh you know me too well my perception my standout visual was the guy falling off the vertebrate into I'm the sorry. blades I took of the other one i just as soon as that happened i'm like that was cool i'm like that was brutal <laughs> And he just like kind of melts into the, <laughs> he just yep. gets scraped up. Dissolves. I yeah. I thought that was that was really amazing when when he when he did that. The other standout visual was, if you recall the latest Batman movie, so it's the Batman, and they do this mm -hmm. scene where it's you know they're really working with with the way that light and darkness kind of contrast with uh, gunshots in like a, a dark room. And they do this fantastic scene and Batman's just beating up on some guys and like this machine gun or these guns are going off, just flashes of light. They try to do something similar here where we have the ghoul come in to fight a bunch of Brotherhood people and he just starts to wreck them and he takes the power core um, out of the machine that's nearby and the lights go out and they just start fighting. It doesn't work as well as in the Batman, but it was pretty cool what they were trying to pull off with like him. He basically runs and like throws a grenade like at the throat of like a uh, this guy in a knight in power, power armor and it blows up. You see, <laughs> you see Maximus just kind of be like freaking out and screaming. You see a lot of stuff kind of hints of it happening. And uh, I thought it was a cool thing that they attempted. It, it was it, it was decent and it was a standout moment for me. I'm like, all right, they're like they're going for it. And uh, same thing with the slow-mo. You're right. There was a good a good long battle uh, going on. The power armor looked cool. Yeah, I, I thought it was a really interesting um, all, all around Vi visually a great, great episode um, from a perception standpoint. Endurance does fall out. Please, longtime fans. Um, 
we've seen a general favorable reception across the spectrum. I was listening to a podcast and this guy was talking about how his parents that are well into their 60s and him were bonding over this show because they happened to be watching it. The word got out that it was good and they actually bonded over the music. They're like, that's the good old stuff. And like <laughs> they were loving the music and he was like, they're like, oh, this is based on one of them video games. And he's like a huge like streamer reviewer. So I bet that they don't bond too much over the games. But this kind of like was a, a a waypoint for them to, you know, pave the way to, to bond over something, which I thought was just amazing. If you look at like yeah. things like Metacritic and uh, Open Critic and scores all around, it's it's always generally favorable. So I it looks like they succeeded. You know, people are going to complain about some of the retcons, some of the things that are, you know, not right with the New California Republic and, you know, the timeline and, you know, who destroyed Shady Sands, like all these things, they're taking liberties with the show, but I think it's all working. And at no point did I feel like they betrayed what Fallout is. Uh, so that's kind of how I feel about it. Any thoughts about what you've seen as far as, you know, how people are receiving and if Fallout is, has legs and if we're going in the future. Yeah, I mean, I, I think they did a great job kind of uh, breaking into the mainstream, obviously putting a really good show together as part of it, getting some really good actors. I mean, I feel like if, if they had had a smaller budget, not as good at actors, maybe not as... Even Prime is not like the most prominent streaming service, but they're a reputable one. Maybe if they'd gone a little bit lower with like a less reputable one, like maybe it wouldn't have broken to the mainstream as much and just been kind of a, a little nerd subculture thing. Yeah. But they put some serious money in to make this happen. They did. And I think that they I think they achieved what they were going for. I think they got they they went past just the nerds and they, they got people watching the show. I got friends on Facebook posting about oh, I'm obsessed with this show and literally have never played the game. So I think they they proved a point that there's there's a reason they picked Fallout and not some other property that they do or don't have. And so I think there's a lot here and it works really well for a TV show. And I think it's it's something that's alluring to people who even don't play the video games. And so I think it, they made a great call and I, I hope that we continue to see more. Uh, when speaking to the Hollywood Reporter, showrunners were asked how soon the second season would come back. And they said, quote, as fast as humanly possible, which Oof. bodes well, right? I don't want to wait like too long. I'd like for them yeah. to capitalize off the success that they've already had. And plus, I just want more. Like if there was anything that happened by the end, I was just like, I need to know even more. I want to see where this goes. So super interesting. Charisma, standout performances in episode eight, the beginning. I will go first on this one. I have to say that uh, I'm I'm upset a little bit that we didn't see some of the other characters as prominent in the uh, finale. So I think that uh, once again, you know, Coop freaking out has to be the standout. I realized that I just realized how much that the show wouldn't was elevated by the acting throughout. And I felt like his betrayal when he heard about his wife just plotting against literally all of humanity. And it really drove the show every single episode. And without Walter Goggins, I don't think that this would have been as successful, quite honestly. Um, plus on the kind of other side of that i felt like maximus and lucy didn't stretch i i saw the same kind of look of of foreboding and 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 fear and kind of like shock on their faces as i did in other episodes so i think it was like kind of a win by default as well what did you think about uh performances in the episode so um yeah, I, I thought Walton did a great job. As always, he's pretty much, I think he's locked in start to finish. And yeah, I agree. I, I try to think of other actors who could have done his, you know, that role and done it really well. Someone that brings this kind of BA attitude to the ghoul, but then also somebody you sympathize with in the flashbacks. Like it's a tough thing to be like cool as this prosthetic based yeah. masked ghoul 
and then also do flashbacks and, and like feel sympathy that your this guy's wife is basically plotting to end the world or whatever. So it's a tough it's a tough role to pull off, and I think them casting him was was brilliant. And so it was one of the big reasons I was stoked about the show to begin with. Um, who I picked for this episode personally uh, is the exact same actor slash character that I picked on episode one, which is the father. Oh, Hank. yeah, you believed um, him, huh? Not it wasn't it wasn't my initial pick. In fact, I was thinking about going with Moldaver because she, she did a pretty good job too, but. There are so many shots in this episode of just Lucy looking into her father's eyes and he's just, and they have this really good shot of him where he's in this cage. He's all beat up and, and dirty and there's a Republic of California flag behind him. It's just like a really nice shot. And he's just staring at her for like a long time, like, like trying to get her, like, look at me. Don't believe her. Just like, and he's not even saying anything, yeah. but it's just like, you can see the desperation in his eyes. You can see... But you don't, you don't, you don't know what you're looking at. Like, is this, is this man evil? Is this man mm -hmm. trying to persuade his daughter to listen to him and not her? Is he actually innocent? Like, it's kind of this conflicting look that he gives. And then finally, he gets released and he puts on the power armor, and all of a sudden he turns around and he's got. All of a sudden, he's like this villain. All of a sudden, yeah. And he just, it kind of flips. It's just really good. I don't know. I thought he did a really good job. I'm glad they didn't kill him off at the beginning, at the end of the episode. I'm glad that he's sticking around. I think it's going to turn into a father versus daughter type of thing here as as things progress, and I'm I'm excited for it. And so I I thought he did a great job. I uh, when I picked him on episode one, I wasn't sure how much more he was going to be in right. the show, mm -hmm. and so I'm glad that. Obviously, he plays a bigger role than we initially thought, and I'm excited to see where they go from here. So, Yeah, same thing. It's like you don't know who's going to stand out or be a key player like early on. So for it to all come full circle and it turns out that he could potentially be, you know, a big bad, you know, person in this whole series is super interesting. And then when he puts on the power armor, as when you know we've seen it before the voice changer like thing is kind of active somehow i thought it was right. a thing about being in the armor to speak through the helmet but they kind of made it like oh well there's actually this like contraption to it where the voice is altered um while you're just kind of standing there uh, um in the armor so he right. sounds like really foreboding really kind of like evil a little bit when he throws on that power armor which is like works super well uh, you know and and it goes with the lore too so it was uh it's kyle mclean he plays hank mclean mclean which is he has a similar um last name ironically yeah, as the weird. actual actor um but oh. shout out to kyle for you know his his acting i think same thing he was he was a standout i kind of wish that he would have like threatened to kill the the you know maximus or something like that at, you know to be a little bit more evil about it he just kind of like swats him away and puts him knocks him out um but right. it you know when you look at the final scene which i'm sure we'll talk about it looks like we're gonna see him again which is good i think overall yeah intelligence the dumbest <laughs> or worst moments of episode eight did anything kind of not work for you in the finale episode, Clay? Any any low? I lights? mean, not really. I guess if I had to pick one, I guess the 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 scene where Maximus kind of gets put on trial mm -hmm. yeah, scene, maybe same. didn't yeah. fully work. I mean, we get this grand reveal that um, Maximus's friend, the the girl, I can't remember her name, mm -hmm. but. You know, they bring up, well, you know, you've been surrounded with with people getting hurt and you're always the one that's kind of there. And so now now that you're, you know, back and we're going to kill you because you're just you're up to no good, basically. And then this girl comes forward and says, hey, actually, I sabotage myself. I put the razor blades in my boot Ugh. and so that I didn't have to go out. And so it's like and so for some reason, her admitting that all of a sudden he's like they let him go or whatever it's just it it works but it kind of doesn't i don't know it was just a little bit like yeah 
if like they were literally about to shoot him and execute him and then all of a sudden they're like all right you're off the hook and and then i guess to tie along with that then at the end of the episode um maximus wakes back up after getting knocked out by uh lucy's dad and and all of the the brotherhood come up and they're like he's the hero he did it he got yeah. the thing and and he kind of i guess it's their way of kind of trying to work him back into where he's trying to get away from the brotherhood but the brotherhood's gonna finally accept him and pull him in yeah and it's he's gonna have to you know next season decide between what you know who to choose or whatever but it was just a little clunky but that's really the only thing i can think of and that's kind of grasping at straws what, what about you well, I agree that the Brotherhood, when they showed up, it was a little odd. First of all, they come and they take back Philly, or they take over the little town, which is, like, an interesting choice. Um, uh, for whatever, probably budgetary reasons, they didn't bring them back up to, like, the big blimp. What is the name of their, like, uh, floating fortress? I don't know mm. if, we, if we have a name for it, but basically they have this... If you pay attention to the games, they have this floating citadel that has the uh, that holds like their base of command. But instead of being up there, they decide to come down and they're sitting kind of like amongst the rubble of, of Philly. And they're like, we took this town over and now we're here and here's our flag. So I thought that was a little weird. But same thing with you. This trial um, was odd. I explained it away for in to myself in two ways first what they're seeking is so important they aren't going to execute him because him offering to bring them to the head is more important than him lying to them that's the way that i kind of explained away them like letting them go um gotcha. the other part of it is when they get into the back room area and the uh the cl the cleric is like talking to him and he's like we're gonna rebuild you've learned lessons power has to be taken you know we're gonna do this myself as the head and then the likes of you he's like you know you're the best that i have to work with is snakes and and, and people like you so he's like i'm gonna deal with it and and you join me because that's the best that you can do so i thought that that was it worked in a way but a low yeah. light for me uh far and away was dad give him the code it was like there was no reason really for Lucy's dad to give Moldaver a code. The fact that he has to turn over a code and she's like, there's one last piece of the puzzle. I needed somebody from vault in order to put in the code. I'm like, okay, that explains why you took them. But then how you were going to get him to hand it over, you know, torture basically is usually what people do and stuff like that. But he, what, why did he give up the code out of guilt? Because his daughter really asked nicely for the third time and then just did it. He should have said, he's like, I'll give the code. Let me out of here. And he's like, and then she said, yeah, he's like, give me your word. And she should have been like shocked. Like, like my dad raised me. Right. Of course. Like, I'm going to tell you, you know, the truth. And then boom, he gives the code in exchange for his freedom and then, like, you know, they let him out is was what should have happened. But instead, it was like, give him the code for no real reason other than your daughter asked. So I thought that was kind of dumb. Right. Um, yeah, I, I, I agree. I see what you're saying. Um, I, uh, I think there's this there's this conflicting thing between him where he's still loyal to vault Tech, but he's also loyal to his daughter. So and he so, genuinely cares about her, you're saying, like that. Right, yeah. I, I think so, and I think that they'll explore that more as they become "quote unquote" enemies in like the f next seasons or whatever. Is he, you know, he wants what's best for Vault Tech, but he also loves his daughter and cares for her. And so, but yeah, I, I guess I, I viewed it as he gave up the code because she was looking at him with like such disgust and and like mad at him for basically killing her mother, so that he he basically out of guilt and and like a shame he was like felt such shame that he was just like fine i'll give you the codes like can we be done with this or whatever i don't know that's the way i see it but you're right i think it should have been like give me the codes or i'm gonna kill lucy and he finally gives it up just Something to show like that, that he still loves her but yeah yeah that's valid see that could have worked too but then 
then they would have painted Moldava as kind of because in the end they wanted you to think right. that actually she wasn't that bad, I guess. Yep. Um, kind of weird. Agility, you gotta be fast in the wasteland. Let's do a quick run through of the final episode of, of season one, episode eight, the beginning. Uh, we kick things off with um, the Brotherhood. We have uh, Maximus on a little mini trial, you could say, and he has to give up the head to the Brotherhood who have taken over Philly. And they let him off and they say, you know what? You're going to lead us to the head. Awesome. We're going to go ahead and have you since you're a, you're not an honest person, but, you know, you know how to get power. So, you know, we'll go ahead and do that. We have a shot in there of them, him holding up the head and turning it over. And uh, we have Lucy as well holding up the other head. And this is just gross. It was gross when it happened. It was gross as you continue to see severed heads in the show. And, and shout out to the uh, prop person who's making these severed heads. Because they look nasty. They look gnarly. <laughs> and, and like... Uh, like I'm looking at a freeze frame of it right now and I want to like look it's just it's just messed up so they do let Maximus off because he offers to take them to the real head and the real MacGuffin that that they've been seeking so hard for so very interesting we have a parallel scene where we move over to Lucy going over to the observatory and then we see this uh, little makeshift community that they've built up there and we have Maldaver who is inside awaiting her prize, um, which is very interesting. We go back and we get a quick shot, uh, really quick, of the ghoul traversing the wasteland, and you know where he's headed. He knows where Maldaver's at. And then we have the flashback to Vault Tech headquarters. Now, something that's interesting here, um, first of all, his car looks super badass. It's uh it's humming as if it has a like a nuclear reactor engine, which we know that you know, the, the the actual cars in the Fallout universe didn't run on regular old gasoline. They did have like little mini reactors inside, which is why they blow up so cool. So awesome car. <laughs> we have Coop and his wife getting out and she's getting a little suspicious because she's like, my Pip-Boy keeps transmitting. I just don't know where it's transmitting to. So he's like almost getting caught up, uh, which is interesting. And then we have uh, Bud, who is the co-worker who's always talking his ear off come up to them and he's like, oh, again with you. And he goes into vault Tech to get a closer ear on what's going on. Uh, any input in our little setting the scene of where all of our characters end up in the beginning of the episode, Clint? Nope. All right, moving on to the real meat and potatoes. We have all the conflicts. So we have Lucy come up to Moldaver, who is um, in the now broken area of the observatory that we had seen before. So post post war, everything torn up. She has a little army. She's you know war torn, and she's sitting at the dinner table with. Um, well, we'll get into it, but basically we have a ghoul who's strapped up and tied up and sitting there with her, enjoying a nice meal. Um, this ghoul looked amazing, and I kind of yeah. knew, I kind of knew that this is going to be someone of of substance. Long story mm. short, we have Moldavia saying, thank you so much. We have our little MacGuffin here. And uh, don't you want to know about everything that's been going on? Now, here's what made me upset. Now we go back and we see Norm. Now, Norm is back in Vault 31. And we have a big problem because he's not in enough of the episode. He spends his mm. whole episode in two little rooms he uh, basically finds a uh, little robot, a little brain of a vault tech executive. Now, did you know that this, uh, the name of this was called Brain on a Roomba, is what they named this character. That's what it is, according to the official IMDB information that's linked with the Amazon Prime video. Brain on a Roomba. Now, <laughs> is this supposed to be the brain of someone that we've seen before like yes. in the show yeah it's bud it's bud why does his voice sound so different it's just because he's a brain inside of glass it's him it's bud you pause it because if you pause it on prime it tells you who the Lord actors are God. in that scene 
and it's it, he and he talks about buds buds you remember oh when he, says he that? does he's like the junior executives that he has on right. ice so I'm, I'm pretty sure that's his brain yeah damn we're not gonna get rid of him are we they took his brain mm -hmm. and put him in a little jar he's and it's him. hilarious he's like don't go he into the funny. next room He's like, issue protocol 56. And he has this little, like, deadly, like, needle go over. He's like, come here. Come here. Come here. <laughs> Hold so, still. I, I love that they change his personality in this way where he is going to be kind of a comic relief. And I hope we do see more of the brain in the jar on the Roomba. Uh, <laughs> we won't leave here. We'll just wrap up Norm's story because what he does find out, big reveal, what was in the vault? It was vault tech executives who were the management supposed to be overseeing the other two vaults for the future. And this was their little experiment. Bud has an idea, three connected vaults where one of them surprise is actually us on ice in these, uh, these little contraptions that, uh, keep people in like a hibernation stasis, which we've seen in fallout games. They look cool. Right. There's a whole room full of them. Uh, any thoughts on this whole big reveal about, Buds, buds, uh, getting thought out one by one to go be overseers over the other vaults. Uh, not too much. I mean, it's it's their way of bringing the characters from the flashbacks into the present and still jump a bunch of time, and so mm -hmm. it's kind of a plot device at times. Yeah. But mm -hmm. I mean, like you said, we've seen it in the games, so it's not that far fetched. And uh, I I guess my thought was, and I don't know if I'm jumping ahead too much here, but Toward the end, Norm is kind of faced with the decision of he doesn't really have much of a choice but to get into one of the pods at the end. Yeah. And so it's like, who knows what's going to happen to him? Are they going to do a time jump again with him where he's going to get woken up years down the line? Whoa. Or like they could do that. I doubt they'll do that, but they That'd could. So cool. And so there's a lot of there's a lot of potential for different things to happen then. But it yeah, it was it was a good little. It wasn't as like complex or dark and twisted as I was hoping the grand reveal of what the secret of the vaults was going to be, but it helps kind of serve other plots in the episode with like her dad and some of the other things, but it's, it was, it was still pretty good. Uh, if you do go to the freeze frame, you can see that we have Norm looking at the device and he can see a list of reactivated people who have been brought up from hibernation. So you do see Betty Pearson on there. You see uh, Hank McLean. You see different people. And it lines up with the, you know, vault overseers that are thought and elected. So that was the whole scheme. And then a very long list of people who are still dormant status. So stable, but still asleep. And... I, I thought it was cool. I didn't see it fully coming, um, quite honestly. You, there was like enough hints, but I like I like that I'm not one of those people who knows the plot twist well, well, well ahead of like it actually happening. I'm usually um, kind of behind in in that way, but it helps make it uh, good TV and good shows. So I didn't know. No. Um, oh, is Norm going to end up? He didn't get a final scene, so we don't know when faced with the choice of the robot holding him hostage if he's going to ice himself and, and put himself to sleep. It's like, I'd sleep if I could. Uh, so I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I Hopefully he outsmarts the robot, reprograms him, does something to wake up the others, something like that. But I, I was hoping Norm would go a more sinister route, and I have no idea what happens now with the people in the vault and all of that. But... It's interesting enough of a premise where I want to see more in season two. Uh, I cannot believe that that brain in the Roomba, it was the guy that we had seen before. What was his name again? Bud? Bud. Bud's Bud. Buds are in there. Wow. Yeah. All right. Well, poor Norm. He should have gotten tripled its screen time in the last episode, in my opinion. Um, hmm. Moving on, we have the highlight of the episode that we all agree. We have... Coop coming in and saying, you know, basically I'm waiting around for my wife. Let me spy on her a little bit. And they're like, oh, we want you to meet who we end up figuring out later. A junior executive, which is ends up being um, Hank. So we are confronted with that. And we have the meeting go on that he listens into, which is just sinister as fuck. 
like they are just like hey speaking really casually casually about the end of the world how do we make money here we have you know bud just totally being bud like he he had hinted at it in different parts of the uh show but he's like time is all we need we just gotta outlast everyone else it's all about management clay it's all about management That's and right. then they reveal the the prospect of all these vaults and he's like well why don't we just throw the kitchen sink at it and have all of our ideas and have all the vaults like have an idea in them and they're like yeah let's have super mutants in one it's like yeah let's take the children from their fucking parents like what the fuck they're like throwing out insane ideas and she's like yeah now we're talking and coop's wife is on board with this shit and she's like oh and how do we ensure that you know we come out on top for real we got bob howard uh on there that's that's her name in the show played by francis turner excellent delivery just super cold as ice she just says let's drop the bomb ourselves clay the map of the vaults on the united states behind them this the this cold as ice speeches talking about the end of the world what do you got to say about this scene any any thoughts i mean we already kind of hit on it war never changes yeah, the, the whole thing's great we get to see uh mr house is that his name mr house did we see from... mr house yeah, yeah, yeah is he at the table from... yeah he's one of the he's the was it robco or whatever oh that... yeah yeah oh my god and he's you know a very prominent very prominent character from uh the new vegas game and one of the main basically one of the main i did not realize that this is yeah. this is fantastic them all like wrapping this up all all together like mr house being in there at the very end we do see basically new vegas so we have a hint at a whole thread of like what's to come we have a lot of big bads to potentially deal with and you mm -hmm. can tell that they're super ruthless. So any good show is going to have good enemies and good threats. So 100%. Um, we have Lucy and Moldaver talking about cold fusion. And, you know, this is what we got. And guess what? Your dad was responsible for going after your mom when she caught wind of all this secrecy. And he blew up Shady Sands. And he's like, don't believe her. <laughs> like not really saying like why not to believe her she's lying to you like she's totally telling the truth dude you're like kind of scummy and i think they hint that rose which is her mom kind of had like a love connection with moldaver um i think that's why she was at the table and they're kind of holding hands i i don't know i saw them steal a look at each other in the in the flashback that kind of hinted at that but basically we have this uh he ran away she ran away with the kids and he got pissed and blew up Shady Sands because they were building it up into a new uh, beacon of humanity. Um, what did you think about this whole revelation? He destroys Shady Sands to to get back at his wife or whatever because she was took the kids and left. What did you think about all this? Yeah, I mean, I thought it was good. Uh, There's also kind of like an implied romance between Lucy's mom and Moldaver. They don't really ever hit on it too much, yeah. but even at the end, you know, she they're holding hands. Yeah. Right. And stuff. So it's interesting. I mean, it kind of, it, it makes it more believable that her dad would kill his wife. Yeah. In the end yeah. Because he's angry. I think there's just, yeah, there's a lot more going on than just her going out and exploring or whatever. She, took the kids and ran basically and yeah. she explored Maldaver's us um so oh. basically we find out later that this is going to be a reason for the shady sands massacre and also for some conflict between maximus who escaped and the city being destroyed um she said they burned it to the ground it looked like again that they used some low yield nuclear weapons I'm going to wait for that to be explained away. Um, I'm going to wrap it up here because it's shown like four or five times. But this cold fusion thing needs to be put inside a machine. It needs to be activated and load up. Then it needs to be turned on. 
And at the very end, we do see that when it's fully finally on, um, it somehow brings power to the wasteland, to different areas that you can see on the skyline. Clay, what the hell happened? How is this happening? Are we just supposed to believe it? Yeah, um, man. Don't don't overthink don't it. Don't overthink it. It just brings yep. power over the airwaves to the whole of the city around them. And don't overthink it. Right. Somehow every light bulb in the city is not broken. And somehow it can just light up miraculously. So, so. here's what I would have liked to have seen to have it explain away. You know this machine that we have the fusion cores in, that everybody keeps pulling the fusion cores out and the lights go out. I would like to have seen like little clips of these machines around in different areas. You don't have to see what's behind them or where they are right. exactly, but if they just start to glow without the fusion cores inside, then I would have been like, oh, okay, somehow this is soaking up energy from the airwaves or whatever, like Wi-Fi, and it's just like getting the signal of energy and then you have some basic lights. I would have loved that. I think it would have explained it away quite nicely, uh, mm. but that's just me. I was a little like, okay, suspend my disbelief a little bit. Um, but yeah, all of a sudden there's power now and we're going to have more lights in season two is my prediction. Um, interesting. We have the big throwdown scene where we have the guy fly off the vertebrae into the chopper. We have rockets. We got mini guns. We got Brotherhood of Steel flying off of these vertebrae, just destroying. We have a nice slow mo. We have all sorts of weapons, headshots. Uh, it, it was, you know, the funny, like, kind of contrast with the Benny Hill music or whatever it is. And just a, a little war going on, which I thought was pretty cool. We have the batman-esque darkness fight scene with uh the ghoul coming in again he steals a fusion core and turns off the lights they have a battle in the night he finds a weakness in the power armor that he used to wield and and he's like there's a little spot right here i could shoot that will just take you down and he figures that out so he's a badass he's taken down a whole hallway full of people uh multiple of them in power armor i thought it was awesome um yep Moving on toward the end here, we do have Lucy and Maximus reuniting. People start calling him Max, which threw me off. Uh, they were calling him Maximus all throughout, but now he's Max, whatever. And then we yeah. have the dad jump inside the power armor, knock Maximus out. And when the ghoul comes in, he runs away like a stuck pig. And she's like, you let him go. He's like, he's going to lead us to the big bads, to the people that are pulling the strings. Someone's always pulling the strings. And one of my favorite parts of the episode, she pulls the gun and does she shoot the ghoul? No, she puts her ghoul mother out of her misery and pops her in the head. And that was kind of sad and kind of like revealing. He's the ghoul's kind of satisfied, right? He's like, Finally, you're learning. <laughs> and then mm -hmm. he leaves. Ma she leaves Maximus on the floor and goes to pursue. Um, well, the the pursue answers basically of what's going on. Um, like you said, Maximus is kind of super quickly initiated as uh, part of the Brotherhood. They're like, you know what? You took down the leader, and you're a knight now. Uh, really quick. Let's just throw that out there. And he's just staring off into space and Maldaver dies within the hands of her ghoul Rose and they she dies. I didn't want Maldaver to die. Did you want Maldaver to die here? Bleed out next No. Time? Yeah, it was kind of a I feel like it was I a guess, waste. Yeah, but it was kinda of like poetic and it was poetic. Whatever. Yeah. 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 So Dane raises Maximus's hand and says, He's a knight now. And then we have the Hollywood sign uh, in the background. We have Lucy and the ghoul walking off. And Hollywood, sponsored by Nuka-Cola. <laughs> Interesting. That was funny. Uh, the final yeah. scene, talk to me about it. We have the Hank, and he comes up on the desert sprawling. And then it looks like New Vegas. Is this New Vegas? That is New Vegas. And there's a skull on the ground, too. Yeah, and the skull is of a... Deathclaw. Deathclaw, which we will hint at that we will see in season two. Uh, 
the, does it surprise you that we're going to New Vegas uh, in season two? It looks like, and Mr. House yeah, I mean, and all this stuff. I, I, I didn't see have, it. I coming. wouldn't have. I wouldn't have guessed that either. No. I liked yeah. it. It was a big. It was a big reveal. Heck yeah, it's awesome. I, I was so stoked when I saw that. People who aren't um, associating, you know, with the games, I don't think this shines through that this is uh, Vegas. You know that this is right. New Vegas. I think that if you were to see especially the fact that there's energy now i don't know if it gets this far over the airwaves where it's going to go over here but i expect that they would have their own power sources if i would right. have seen some neon lights more at night i think that it would have spoke to people who were not fans of the games to kind of really drive home that this is supposed to be the strip uh do you agree yeah i think that's valid that would have been yeah, nice I could see that yeah instead we get kind of like a rising of the dawn or dusk shot Right. So interesting, mm. interesting. Yeah. I think if you would have like ended with like some, dan -na -na, dan -na -na, dan -na -na, like like yeah, that yeah, would have yeah. drove it home too. Like that. So we had a a couple missed opportunities with the very end, but overall, I thought it was uh thought it was interesting. Luck. If we're lucky, what are we gonna see in season two? Any predictions? Anything that you really want to see uh, in season two? I want to see the vegas strip and how they pull that off i think they have a lot to work with now that they're expanding the universe into you know that area so that's what i'm like hoping to see is like they've planted a lot of seeds for what we could see later uh enough to keep me super interested in future seasons anything for you yeah there's a couple things uh one of them after watching this episode again today uh toward the end there they kind of hint at uh, at Lucy going off with the ghoul and kind of like, do you want to get some answers? Do you want to find who's pulling the strings? And they kind of go off together. And so I'm, I'm looking yeah. forward to seeing a more united front between the two of them yeah. where they, it becomes less of like them hating each other and more of them working together and becoming kind of a, this little like power duo. Yes. And so I want to see that. I want to see more of that where they become more allies and less like at, at each other's throats the whole time. Um, I want Thaddeus to come back. Uh, I want to see more Thaddeus, what, what he gets into. Probably going to be turned more ghoulish as, as things go along. So I want to see more of that. I love his character and uh, love the actor. And then uh, I guess the last thing I wanted to see, I want to see more, obviously, I think everybody does, of um, of Cooper and, and his story of what happens to his wife, what happens to his daughter. I mean, th th at the very beginning of episode one, we see him riding off, running away from the bombs on a horse carrying his daughter. So it's like, what happens between then and when he becomes a ghoul? How does he lose his daughter? How at, at odds is he with his wife? Is he trying to find his wife because he still loves her or because he's trying to get his daughter back? Like, all that stuff. I want to know more about that. I love his character. And so I, I'm, I'm excited to see more of that. You're so. right. I mean, in the timeline, there's there's a time that goes from when he is understanding the true plot and when he is, you know, making nickel and dime money by being a children's entertainer. And he has custody or he has his daughter there. So it's like, what what has happened in that time? You know, right. like like what happens to her where he says, you know, and I miss this in the recap, you know, he's like, I've been dying to ask somebody one question, where's my family? Meaning she could be alive. They could like have made her one of these people who the daughter is still alive somehow, like and, and lives forever type. I don't know. They didn't explain how they've done this, but how do we have these people like live forever? It's, are they in hibernation? until a certain time um it, to me it seems like they also have maybe done some youth serum type shit too i don't know but something has is happening in this whole time where we're gonna go back i think we're gonna have more flashbacks of this time era and i love that time era in the show so yeah this is this is great um final review and star rating I'll go first on this one. I got to give it a four star. I want to give it a four and a half. And I think it could have if they would have had these little plot holes we discussed like full. I it would have given a four and a half. But I'm going to go with a solid four. It was great. A lot of good payoffs. 
not enough norm some plot holes still that i think was a little bit lazy and things that would have set it to a, a four and a half for sure solid four what do you think clay yeah, I, I I agree to a point. I don't think that the plot holes are that big a deal. Um, I think they're just minimal stuff that we're kind of nitpicking at. Mm -hmm. But 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 some of it's valid. Um, overall, I, I I loved this episode. Uh, it was a great finale episode. I thought I thought they did a really good job of of giving the viewer enough information to like the the big twists and everything, but then not showing their whole hand and not. Thankfully, th this won't be the end of the show, and we'll see more of it. And so they didn't have to wrap too much up. They left enough that you still want to come back, and there's still a lot of holes that need tying up. And I'm sure they're going to open up more, more things a as they go. Um, but yeah, I as I rewatched it today before we recorded, like I I was loving it. I didn't want to skip anything, and I was just like. I was really enjoying it. And so I think it was a great finale episode and I thought they did a really good job with it. So uh, I give it a five out of five. I thought Whoa. it was a great episode. Handing yeah. out the five out of five. What did you think, everybody? Thank you for joining us. For Foul Out fans, brought to you by Mega Dads. Check us out. Subscribe, like. If you've listened at all, we really appreciate you. You know, if you stuck with us from the beginning. We super, super appreciate you. Thank you very much. Join us on the Mega Dads Discord. You can find a link to it in any of our YouTube content right in the description. We chat about games. We uh, talk about what we should be playing with each other. And we talk about Fallout because Fallout's really cool. Um, we are going to be back for Season 2, aren't we, Clay? Do you want to make a promise to the people? Are we promising? Yep, let's do it. Okay, Pinky promise with all of you. We'll be back for Season 2. Thank you so much for your support. Uh, we really appreciate it. Thank you for joining us as we travel through the wasteland.